Greetings, this is N1IR for the Technician License Class, Part 4, Mind the Rules. Okay, so, so far we've done about ham radio, call signs, control, and now we're on Mind the Rules. Part 97 is a part of the SEC regulation containing the rules governing amateur services. And you can actually download this off the FCC website. If you do print it out, it's going to be about a two-inch three-ring binder. Uh, there's a lot of information in there. Transmission of language that can be considered indecent or obscene is prohibited. Under normal, non-distressed circumstances, the FCC rules regarding power levels as used in amateur bands restricts, while not exceeding the maximum power permitted on a given band, use the minimum power necessary to come out to carry out desired communications. Alright, what this basically says is you use the minimum, minimum amount of power necessary for your communicate back and forth between the person you're communicating with. That is so you don't clog up the band. Uh, those of you familiar with the old CB days and 11 meter, you had the linear amplifier, you cranked up the radio, you splashed everyone, and it was miserable. So uh, amateur radio is very different from the old CB days back in the 80s. Um, we want to use the minimum amount of power necessary to carry out our communications. And not only does it, you know, not congest the bands, it also saves your radio too. So if your radio is transmitting on a lower power, it, it is happy, it's not heating up, and it's not uh, reducing its lifetime. So there's a variety of reasons to, to use the minimum amount of power, but mainly is because uh, you don't want to be stepping over anyone. You don't want to cause a lot of uh, other harmful interference going on throughout the band unnecessarily. At no time is willing, willful interference to, to other amateur radio stations ever permitted. So stuff like jamming, uh, stuff like that, it, it's, uh, it's harmful interference. That's not, not good. Transmissions that seriously degrade, obstructs, or repeatedly interrupts the radio communication service operating in accordance with the radio regulations meet the SEC definition of harmful interference. So, uh, as amateur radio operators, we've got to be careful not to uh, interfere with other systems that are out there, primarily radio navigation, um, radar facilities, uh, that sort of thing. Radio navigation services are protected from the interference by amateur signals under all circumstances. So there's parts of the amateur band that uh, are very close to or is part of radio navigation. That is 160 meters. Uh, you have uh, the 2.4 gigahertz band. Uh, they're, very, they're very close to the amateur band or on the amateur band itself. And you just got to be mindful not to cause any interference with, with those systems. Transmissions intended for reception by general public is the term broadcasting in the FCC rules for amateur services. So this is generally one-way transmission that you're broadcasting information, uh, and that's not good. Amateur radio service is two-way communication back and forth. We're not broadcasters. We're not professional FM, AM, or shortwave radio operators. We are amateur radio. Amateur radio stations may engage in broadcasting when transmitting code practice information bulletins or transmissions necessary to provide emergency communications. So this is, th this is the exception to the rule. If we're transmitting practice codes like W1AW down in Connecticut, uh, information bulletins such as amateur radio newsline, um, or transmissions necessary to provide emergency communications, that is okay. Assuming no other means is available, amateur stations are authorized to transmit signals relating to broadcast program production or news gathering only when such communications directly relate to the immediate safety, human life, protection of property. So that's when no other means are, are, are available. Transmissions that codes of ciphers that hide the meaning of a message is allowed by amateur stations only when transmitting control commands to a space station or radio controlled craft. So that is the only time you use encryption is when you're controlling a space station or satellite or your remote control craft. Any other time it is not allowed. 
The only time when an amateur station is authorized to transmit music is when it's incidental to the authorized retransmission of a manned spacecraft communications. So as part of the uh, NASA program, we trans retransmit uh, communications between the uh, manned spacecraft communication and Earth. And part of that, uh, they w in the morning, they wake up the astronauts with music, and that's part of the incidental um, transmission of music. That is, that is okay, as long as it's coming from manned spacecraft communications. Because there's no way we can regulate that. Uh, amateur radio operators may use their stations to notify other amateurs of the availability of equipment for sale or trade when the equipment is normally used in an amateur station. Such activity is not conducted on a regular basis. So um, on the air we have swap meets, swap net meets. Uh, an amateur might come up saying, I have this piece of equipment for sale, contact me by email. That's okay. Um, as long as it's not conducted on a regular basis. And it's got to be uh, considered uh, amateur radio related. Computers, radios, electronics, that sort of thing are all um, equipment that, that is amateur related. The station licensee must make the station and its records available by, for the FCC inspection at any time upon the request of the FCC representative. So, uh, keep logs. I would suggest keeping logs, especially if you're in EHF. Not so much on the VHF bands, but uh, you want to make sure that, that you're covered. If the uh, FCC happens to knock on your door, uh, you have to let them in and inspect your station uh, upon their request. Revocation of the station license or suspension of the operator's license is possible with the correspondence from the FCC is returned as undeliverable because the grantee failed to provide the correct mailing address. This is really, really important. Uh, you have to keep your current mailing address current in the FCC UOLS, the Universal Licensing System. If they send you a letter and it bounces back, they will revoke your license because there's no way for them to contact you. They don't use phone, they don't use email, they don't use texting. They only use the U.S. Postal Service for mail. So here is an example. Special counsel f uh, in the FCC Spectrum Enforcement Division, Raleigh Hollingsworth, wrote Larry L. Smith, KC7LJR of Middleton, Idaho, and Larry J. Manitag, KD7JTG of Payson, Arizona, on June 28, 2006, to inform them that the FCC was suspending the technician tickets for the remainder of the license term or until each licensee provided a valid mailing address. So that's a perfect example right there. And uh, that was a short one on that one, so the next part is the uh, Q&As. So see you then.